Hello and thank you for staying with us. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we discuss the biggest entertainment news, lifestyle gist, celebrity gossip, showbiz, and so much more. If it's not on Tea Time, then it's not big enough. My name is Ifeo Luo Shinkai, and I've got my co-anchor with me, Ife Omai. How Hello. you doing? Tea Time with the Ife. So with the that Ife. That sounds like we're mm. married, so that's weird. Like we're married? Yeah. Like, that's no, weird. No, no, it's just name. If it's Tea Time with your Shinkai, then it sounds hey. like we're married, you know? <laughs> no. <laughs> but it's just, it's just with the Ife. Right. The IFEs, and you know what that is. That's tea <laughs> oh time my. with a lot of love. Oh, gosh, can we not? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's delve into the first story for the day, which is on Alicia Keys as she debuts a uh, powerful anthem in partnership with CNN. A good job, and mm. if you ask me, I think that's a good job. It was mm. that performance. Was I mean, there's something about the pictures, I have to put it to mm. those pictures because her lyrics was also like blending a lot with mm. the pictures and everything. and it was just so powerful to really see to really see that they're in a community like that because we don't have that yet here. We're all heroes for ourselves, mm -hmm. but there, there's a lot of sacrifices from certain career mm -hmm. paths and everything. So it's really beautiful to just see that people are taking the time to you know acknowledge them and appreciate them as well. And her voice is really beautiful. I mean, every time you see Alicia Keys behind the piano, you should be expecting something amazing. And this wasn't any any different really i think i just like to state out the technicals of that video because it was well directed the fact that it's done in collaboration with cnn as well mm. the voice the pitch of her voice the level in which she sang everything was on point so honestly it's a good job and to and to be frank we really have to give kudos to our heroes our day-to-day -day people that go out there on the street to make sure that myself and yourself we're safe every day and it could get twisted sometimes because like Elsie pointed out this morning, more than 40 medical practitioners have been um, po tested positive to the virus. So what is actually going on in this part of the world? Because we need to do more for this medical of um, practitioners that go out every day to make sure that people are safe. Now, what do they have health insurance? Are mm. they are they going to cover their families in case anything happens to them? You know, these are the questions that really need to be answered. I don't know if you remember. I don't know if you watched this. Um, there was like a press release that came out with Jimmy. Uh, what's his name? Or oh, I can't remember for the life of me now. And it was asking the Minister of Health, like, yeah. um, is there any uh, incentive, incentive for, for hazard or whatever? And I said, no. It's his, it's their job and everything. And then. He said they've always had it. Though. He was making reference yeah. to the past. And it was like they were never prepared for COVID-19. Exactly. Yes. So I, that, I think I saw that video as well. I think in this case, in Nigeria, we don't really, like I, like I said, except you're in the medical um, department, we don't really have heroes because we're not all staying at home and sacrificing. I mean, to an extent, we are. Mm. And if you put it that way, well, you and I are also part of those heroes because we have to risk yeah. our lives coming to work every... To so make sure you get the information. Exactly. So, um, but I think a lot people are, are doing that for themselves a lot more. Like, mm. I think people are not staying at home and people are not... Um, leaning on the others to really do the job i, I was still in traffic yesterday in yaba wow. so um it's 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 a very different context but i think for there for like places like the uk and america where it's the, it's a serious lockdown a lot of people have to really be the saviors for others um and and, and I, I guess that's why this is even a lot more um necessary and and important what she's doing to just say thank you and make them understand that we we see them we acknowledge them and we love them for what they're doing also i won't stop um pointing our nigerian celebrities in the right direction because it's more like okay everybody's locked down so we're all the same but you need to know that there are people with more influence than others like for instance the celebrities you have a, a level of influence on a lot of people what are you doing in this lockdown do you understand i know it, not everyone can react to pandemic the same way but at the same time you think you need to think about your level even if you cannot do it alone collectively mm. get your um colleagues together and put Think of something innovative, something new that people can jump on that would help other people in this time. Because I can imagine if I'm a medical person right now, I'll probably be listening to Good Job as I walk all day because mm. I know that somebody out there is thinking about me. Somebody out there is appreciating me. Right. Do you understand? That's the most important thing. But I think we need to move on to the next story, which is on Chris Emsworth, who, who calls homeschooling, I mean, COVID-19 lockdown, an absolute challenge. So apparently he said it's more like, his kids, he can't get them to sit down to learn 
during homeschooling. I mean, during the lockdown via homeschooling, because most of the time he has to begin with them and there's an argument back and forth for mm. three hours and then they do the work for just 20 minutes. And I also saw a post yesterday about other celebrities that came out and one other regular person, okay, I won't, yeah, a regular person that came out to say that uh, um, the school called and they said that um, she has to pay school fees in full. What? Uh, yeah, that she has to pay school fees in full for homeschooling. And she was like, for a two-year-old that she cannot even <laughs> get to watch PJ Mask, <laughs> right? That, my dear, he has dropped out. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. you understand? So I think then another person came out, I think that, that's a popular person, I think that's a celebrity, but for the life for me i can't remember now it said that the school said that they are taking five percent off the school fees so and it's like five percent is too little it's still very little yeah that is too little that you're making it look like it's a it's a small inconvenience that it's not that's actually the reason why they send people their kids to school is for them to be around other kids learn different cultures and mm. all of that yeah but no if you think about people with different preferences you can't well, say I, I think i think the, it, it, it's a bit it to be unfair to see that because first of all this per this teacher still have to put in just as much time if not more into converting physical learning to e-learning and and being able to change the dynamics of that mm. one Two is that these people are probably looking at how they're going to pay their staffs as well. Mm. So it's very important to keep that cycle um, and flowing. And to keep the business running as yes. well. Yes. Um, and I think also to engage that child in the year system. Like, you know, if, you, if the person drops out, then you kind of have missed that, whatever, that semester or that year, whatever, you're not enrolled. So then you have to do that again. So it's, it's, at the end of the day, it's business. And I kind of understand how, like, you know, you still have to pay fees. I would say that I, I can get why 5% might just be a, be a little, little bit small. too small because you're not paying no, for... No, but these teachers are doing a whole less more. If you think about it, because virtual learning is supposed to be, it's, 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 it's a technology way, it's virtual. It's, I still understand? think you have to work on it. I'm not, gonna, I'm, not, I'm not going to say that it's the same thing as having 20 kids running around. Yes, yeah. but or having to I still make think sure it's an, it's an effort, so they reduce. should pay for that. But the, the, the parents should pay for that. And But um, I guess, I, I don't know, I'm not, a, I'm not into education, so I wouldn't say what, I can't, I can't tell you like what should be valued for people's times. Like I can't say that mm. or e-learning is like a lot easier and because of this and this and that. No, like, but, I don't but that's know. the whole point of technology to make our lives easier, right? Yeah. So if we're doing but like, to it what, via... To what percentage, if you're like... To what percentage? They're not, if like, if I, it's I, a class of 30 people, they cannot teach 30 people at once. So they'll probably break them down into groups and you're teaching five students. So it doesn't even mean more time, probably. Um, more time. See, Would I you know say nothing more time? about education. <laughs> so okay, so. we know nothing about. So don't let us even because I'm sure that the real professionals. Some would teachers argue are probably out there looking at us like, like what are we? What talking are they talking about? about? <laughs> like we don't even. And guess what? A lot of them do not even have an idea about homeschooling. So right now, a lot of them are learning as well. A lot of these teachers are going back to bases. They're beginning to learn how to use some of this um, techno um, technology tools like webinar, like um, Zoom, like Skype, and a lot of them- Why are you giving them free ads if they- <laughs> 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 uh, I think one thing I, asked, I, I just thought about now is how um, other schools that don't have that capacity, especially with children who go to those schools who don't have that capacity will be so kind of like left behind. Um, mm. And it's kind of worrying. I feel like there might be just a massive gap between um, this year and going forward with education system, even do not, not just for homeschoolers, but for uni kids as well, like uni students, like if you're in first year, for example, and you go to, I don't know, whatever school that can't afford e-learning or the students can't afford e-learning in comparison to a place like maybe CU or whatever that can have that, then what you find is that people like are, um, what's it called, a lot ahead of their, their peers. I think the parent also mentioned the that, that maybe the teachers are scared that they will never catch up, that the parents won't catch up and all right. that. But um, sadly, we need to go on a break, but Tea Time would return with more stories. Stay with us. Welcome to Tea Time, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I decide that every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, feeling good. No time to die. Everybody's feeling alright. I 
can still make music and people are still buying. That was how they look myself, minimal are you? Mm. Apala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! Sleeping early, sleeping early. Hi, ho hello and welcome back to Tea Time on PLOS TV Africa. And moving on to the next story, I hope African girls experience living independently before they get married. Feminist. What feminist is that? You should know. Um, I don't, she, she <laughs> never <laughs> said she was a feminist. Okay. At least not with the tweets. Um, no, I think a profile shows that she's a feminist. Okay, so, so I guess she's, she, what, the point of the tweet was that she was encouraging independence amongst young people, mm -hmm. young women especially. She was saying how she thinks that we need to, as young girls, before you get married, you need to experience a level of um, independence and almost get intimate with it. So she gave a lot of examples about how like, she feels that we should be able to pay our own rent at some point, um, cook on your own, hire someone, uh, d d um, uh, what's it called, decorate your home, like things that are very mm. adult. Like experience all of that stuff before you start to give it away. I really like that. Um, I think that that's not going to happen. Unfortunately, it's, gonna, it's not going to happen for a lot of Nigerian women. It's just not. They are, sure. There's no capacity for that. There's no system for that. They're not in cultures that encourage that ever. So a lot of Nigerian girls would jump from, from high school, probably boarding school, to their father's house. And then maybe hostel if they're lucky. Sometimes they'll still be at home. And then after uni, NYSC, where you'll be so going to work from home. Fed all and then they life. Some have just been spoon fed, but that you are not independent. The problem with not having independence is that I, I, I personally think that you lack individuality. Mm. Like there's something you about haven't discovered yourself. Thank you. To the um, and it worries me that if you haven't discovered yourself ever, you haven't gotten the chance to do that because you were always a child and then a student and then a wife. You wouldn't know um, the type of things you like to do alone. Exactly. The type of and things you like to do around people. Exactly. You know, things like and then that. it makes me wonder that are you actually living a fulfilled life? Um, some people fit that category well and they love being domesticated and being controlled by other people. But mm. for others, I can, I can imagine that that's very, very 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 unfortunate like it's an unfortunate situation i've have i've been privileged enough to have that type of experience from a very young age actually so since i left the country i've been always been living on my own and, mm. and i think it's made me grow up really fast and also be very clear as to what i want in life and as a person so because i already know that i'm grounded in myself and that i can provide in um sustainability for myself to a large extent the way i need a man is very different mm. um and i think it's 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 a lot healthier because i know my weights i know i have weights and then i know what i'm trying to look for in the other partner um, and i think that if you don't have that experience then like how do you even make those decisions sure. you'll not be wild by somebody who pays rent like don't no one can wow me because you pay <laughs> rent because i've done that and then i don't think it should be gender based because i think this is applicable to both genders because uh, even as a man you need to experience but don't you think that in this country a lot of men live like that already in comparison to no, the women of course of course but i i also know of men that got married in their parents home right that they, they've been dating a girl and they probably moved out like two three months before their wedding now that's your first rent ever being paid mm. now that's your first bill being paid you know all of those things you need to know how it is because sometimes it comes with a lot of pressure because sometimes it doesn't work out the way you expect it to and then you're behind on certain bills how are you going to handle it then are you going to take it out on your wife are you going to be grumpy so i think every man should be able to have experienced such things like paying bills paying rent running out of water running out of gas running out so that way that you pressure. know yeah that pressure feel it a little bit before you 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 get married because that way you'll be able to handle it properly when you eventually get married. And think about it that it's not just you this time, it's with somebody else. So if you mm -hmm. just rush into it, you might just be looking like, and she might start saying different traits and you're like, oh, he's not as man enough. I mean, I, well, I, I, see, I see know, think it's also like important to also put that disclaimer out there that it, it's not that if you don't do these things, then mm. you would be a bad, mm. no, you have a course. bad relationship. I, like I said, I know people that got married in their parents' houses, right? But they're doing well right now. They're, they're managing their family, right? I don't live with them, but from what I can see from the outside, it looks good. Right. You understand? So I think at, at the end of the day, you would adjust. But about women, I think every woman needs to experience that. I'm more concerned about the women because in the sense that 
a lot of women need to be independent because even uh, those that have been independent, when they get married, they tend to put all the pressure on the man, like, okay, it's mm. your duty. Now, imagine a woman that doesn't have such a mentality and has been independent. So whenever you're not being provided for, you can provide for yourself. I think you make a better partnership, like yeah, a better I think relationship would be, would be because better you know how to pull that weight. Yeah. All right. So I think I have to all the women and men out there, try and get your independence, your individuality, and find out your real self before you get into marriage. So but now, on to the next story. I destroyed my ex's properties and warned him not to date someone lower than me. Bibi Niger star, Chloe. Hmm. Uh, what? What's the moral of your story? <laughs> <Fam>, sister, <laughs> sister, like, I can, there's so many ways that this statement irks me. Um, it's just really gross. First of all, who are you, sis? Like, Auntie, mm. who are you? I think I'm just going to take a back seat on this Like, one. who Can are you and up? what do you, <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what do you define as somebody who is lower than you? Thank one. You. Secondly, you are priding yourself. Well, I mean, she, she did say that she was surprised that she did that, but you, it, was, it, it still felt like she was flexing like a weird flex like i even broke his phone and then i broke his windscreen mm. and i never thought i could do that there's so many issues about this if you really don't care about the person in the same breath you care so much that you're breaking his stuff you care so much that you're what you are so pissed if you date somebody that is lower than you there's, there's something really sick about this um it gives me that itch of like competition that women have that i find really negative where you're comparing yourself to another person to a point where you're even scoring who's lower and who's higher. I think that's a bit extreme. Um, she's always been one. Well, I didn't watch her Big Brother, so she's an infamous person to me. Like, I don't know why she's famous because I didn't watch her. Mm. But I know she has, like, an audience. And I always worry every time I hear her in the news because it's always about something really weird. Like, she has, like, a very extreme um, way of thinking. And I don't know why that is but i don't necessarily think that is the healthiest thing so my opinion is that if you have an ex have a good relationship with the ex i'm not saying that active relationship with the ex will have a good relationship with the fact that that person is now an ex and, and be then, civil about it this is not something that this is not an action that i want to promote like i remember yesterday we we're talking about this heated conversation about nothing. violence mm -hmm. um i don't care if it's to a child a boy an ex a woman a man cheap goods like uh, there's no tolerance for that. I think you've touched all the right areas in the story. And um, obviously, I agree with you. And also, my question is, what is the yardstick for someone lower than you yeah. or someone you agree? Because yeah. she said um, she, she there was a time she was with her ex-boyfriend in the club. And he was talking to a girl, a dead girl. And in my mind, I'm mm -hmm. wondering, what is the definition of a dead girl? Is it the fact that she's not wearing designer clothes? Yeah, it's, she sounds it very shallow. She like, sounds very shallow. Is it and the very money? Vain. Like, what is makes you better money? than the what other makes, person? Do you understand? Because there are a lot of women that are probably not fashion inclined. That they don't really wear the best of clothes, designers, and all of that. But when you check out their resume, God, mm. you feel or even just the like, person that they the, are. Their personality, the way they speak, their the level of education, their level of influence. You don't even know people for you to go and start saying this person is not. Level. So, Chloe, we totally do not agree with you on this table. But sadly, there's never enough time when we're having so much fun. And that's how we wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. And remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always will go to my co-anchor, Ifeo Lua Omai, and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is... If I'll lower, she care.